veteran crews, it's just another day's work. One more 1,500 mile haul up and down the ruddy Pacific. 15 hours, 7,000 gallons, four engines, 11 guys. Not wood, a water jump across 20 degrees of the globe, a continent of ocean. Destination, Tokyo. It's like taking off in Mexico for targets in Canada. The 314th is airborne. 145 planes, one minute apart, 67 tons each. takeoffs are a tough sweat. That first long moment is the worst. Some swear it takes luck, like a wife stocking, to beat it. At Tinian, 100 miles north, two more B-29 wings prepare for takeoff. 134 aircraft from the 58th wing. 100 more from the 313th wing. At Saipan, a few minutes later, the veteran 73rd wing lines up for takeoff. 153 more bombers are added to the mission strike. B-29 is airborne at 1540. The tower at Saipan relays this information to the controller back at Guam. First and last takeoff times of each wing are recorded here and go to make up the first of a series of tabulated mission reports. Copies of these reports are dispatched to headquarters, Washington and posted on the control room report board. During that first hour, the B-29s have settled down for the big grind, saving precious gas, cruising a thousand feet off the water. Ability, experience, confidence, ride in each plane. A plan of action for 11 men trained and tested to function as one. The navigator sets the course, logging island checkpoints as they climb past the Northern Marianas. Pagan. Assumption, Morg, the Pohores. After about four hours of flight, the bombers pass close to Iwo Jima. The hot rock, a black, gritty pork chop halfway to Hanshu. Eight square miles bought and paid for by our Marines. We made some quick changes. Cutting away that sulfurous volcanic crust and rolling Iwo's surface into one enormous flat top. Three big airstrips now launch our P-51s for bomber escort over Japan. General Moore and his staff of 7th Fighter Command run the show and direct all air-sea rescue operations in close collaboration with Bomber Command. A last-minute briefing check, just to make sure today's fighter escort knows all air-sea rescue positions. Out on the line, General Moore's P-51s are warming up for the longest fighter flight on record. Seven hours on one engine, extra belly tanks, 
extra nerve and stamina in the cockpit. About the time our bomber wings are passing Iwo Jima, the pea shooters are taking off. Scheduled to join them three and a half hours later off the shores of Japan. After a rendezvous at Kita, the P-51s head for assembly point, led by B-29s designated as navigator ships. Farther west, our bomber wings grind ahead on the last lap to the Empire. Reports to the controller back at Guam give their flight position, which is kept up to the hour on the mission board. Still at low altitude, the B-29s are approaching the bad weather belt, where unreported storms and cold fronts appear suddenly across the bomber course. Pilot to crew, we're going to start our climb. Check oxygen equipment. Tell Bucky better get out to his doghouse. As they begin their slow climb to altitude, the crews prepare for the vital business ahead. And from now on, till they come off target and head home, it's all business. The central fire control system is warmed up. Superhuman brain power at the flick of a switch. Each gunner flexes his sights and tries the coordinated fire controls with a few short bursts to clear the gun. After pushing up to altitude, the bombers arrive close to assembly point. Air in the pressurized cabin is comparable to 8,000 feet, but oxygen masks are adjusted and ready for instant use. From the southeast, our fighter escort appears with its navigator ships, which now turn off to wait for the fighter's return at rally point. The Mustangs climb in formation to take positions above the boxes of B-29s. Lead bombers begin to circle, dropping the new smoke markers for assembly. The project officer observes this part of the tactical plan in action. From various zone positions, the groups separate and form on their lead ships in nine or 11 plane waves, which head for initial point. The big parade is on. Landfall is picked up. Along with the first flak burst from enemy coastal batteries. Fujiyama, the familiar white beacon, marks the turn for initial point. Black becomes heavier and more accurate. 